Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6. I honestly believe it was one of the first verses of the Bible that I memorized. I love it. You'll be familiar with it, class. But without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please Him, to please the Lord. For he that cometh to God must believe, must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I'm sitting in the parking lot of the, the church where we're in revival this week. It, it's colder today than it was yesterday. Uh, Mid-70s yesterday. We're in the 40s. Perhaps the low 40s now. But I wanted to. I'm sitting here by their cemetery. They have erected there that cross. Can you see it? The way of the cross leads home by faith. It is by faith I trusted that Savior who died on the cross. It is by faith I trusted His shed blood to wash away my sins. My sin. And uh, that same faith that got me saved is the same faith I must live by now as a Christian day by day. And without that faith, it is impossible to please Him. Uh, without faith in English, I believe the teacher, grammar teacher would call it a prepositional phrase. Indeed. But that word without is so important. In Greek, it's chorus. C-H-O-R-I-S, chorus. It comes from chora, C-H-O-R-A, which means a space. Here's a finger, here's a finger. There is space, but no space, space. That gap without faith. I believe that Paul, following the Holy Spirit, is telling us we cannot live a day with a space, with a gap between faith dictating, guiding, and directing our lives. I'm afraid there are a lot of uh, church members who go from Sunday to Sunday without really exercising their faith. That's a gap. That's a space. You are living to that degree. You are living without faith. Preacher, you're making it sound like faith is a 24-hour-a-day job. I wouldn't call it a job. Privilege. Wake up in the morning. Faith. Eating lunch. Faith. Going to bed at night. Faith. A life that is controlled by faith in the Word of God. By faith in the God of the Word. By faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. By faith in the power of His blood. By faith. By faith. I'll say more about that in a moment. But without faith. But without faith. Even the but. Uh, that's called a conjunction. It is linking verse 6 to verse 5 that went before. Enoch walked with God. Enoch pleased God. And then Enoch was translated to heaven. Uh, Enoch lived a life that did not have faith gaps in it, even from time to time. But with that, and maybe it goes all the way back to Abel, conjunction, linking verb. Abel lived a life that, boy, didn't go weeks or months without faith being a reality. 
in his heart and in his soul. Some of us do. Shame, shame, shame. Gaps. Spaces between our faith being vibrant and growing and strong. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Preacher, what kind of faith is that? Jesus one day was absolutely, uh, absolutely amazed. He found some people that uh, he found some people that had no faith. No faith. The word there, and I'm going to give you the New Testament reference, is apistia. They and it means without faith. They had no faith. They had no faith. Mark 6.6 6. And Jesus marveled. He was aghast. He wondered. Amazed. And Jesus marveled because of their unbelief. They had no faith. Apistia. No faith. No faith. I mentioned the other day uh, the Lord's about to heal the child of a daddy a child that's demon possessed. He's he's got some maniac tendencies. And uh, do you believe I can do this, Lord? I believe. It's in Mark nine twenty four. And then the man prayed, Lord, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. That's no faith, Lord. I'm believing with all I've got. Something in me still doesn't believe like I want it to, like it ought to. Help my unbelief. Jesus found occasions of. No faith. No faith. Jesus found occasions of little faith. He said to his disciples one day, in the storm, they were frightened. O oh, ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. That's in Matthew 8, 26. No faith. Little faith. Now watch this one. Great faith. I know of at least two occasions Jesus came across great faith. Great faith. There was a centurion who had a servant who was ill. And he came to Jesus and said, My servant is ill. Can you help him? Jesus said, Yeah, I'll go to your hometown and, and, and we'll heal him. And, and, uh, and uh, he said, You don't need to come. Say the word. Say the word. You're God. Say the word. And my servant will be here. And Jesus heard that. He marveled. And he said to those around him, I have not found so great faith. Great faith. No, not in all of Israel. There was a little Gentile girl whose daughter, whose daughter was demon possessed, being tormented. She went to Jesus. Didn't look like Jesus was going to help her. But finally, finally she pled, she prayed and, and got the victory. Something about the crumbs from the master's table. And Jesus said, O oh, woman, great is thy faith. Your little girl's going to be well. Be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that hour. Matthew 15, 28. Without faith. I don't know if you've got little faith. Great faith. Sometimes I feel like I don't even have a mustard seed worth of faith. But I know I cannot live my life without faith. Without faith. Without, I, I can't live my life with gaps, hours, days between loving and exercising my faith in my precious Lord. Not and please Him. Not and please the Lord. Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. Paul loves that word impossible. He embeds it here uh, in the book of Hebrews again and again and again. Can I, can I give you some samples? In Hebrews 6, 4, it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and on and on, impossible. Hebrews 6, 18 said God's given us two immutable things and uh, it is impossible for God to lie. Hebrews 10, 4, same word, it is not possible. It is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats 
should take away sin. And then here, we're learning without faith, it is impossible to please him. I'm, oh boy, can I say this and get an amen? I'm thankful I know the God of the impossible. I'm glad I know the mighty creator and redeemer, omniscient, hallelujah, to his name. Without faith, it is impossible. The Greek there, it is impossible. Ah, dunatos. It can't be done. It is unable to be accomplished. It is impossible to please Him. Uh, now, preacher, if I put a lot of money in the offering, that'll please God? Don't know. Maybe, but, but I don't know. Uh, preacher, if I knock on uh, 75 doors and, and put in gospel tracts, will that please God? I, 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 I imagine so, but I don't know. I don't have a verse. But I got a verse that says if you have faith, if you trust Him, if you believe in Him, if you lean on Him, if you accept His promises as true and base your life on those promises, you will please God. You will please God. Wasn't that Enoch's testimony in our last lesson? He pleased God. He had this testimony that he pleased God. That verb please, it is essentially the same as, as we had yesterday. Uh, E-U, you, which means good, it's positive, well, and then Arrestos, which comes from the verb aresco, which may, and, and that comes from the verb iro. We're going back too far in these verb chains, and it means to lift up, to lift up. Here's the idea. Here is the Greek idea. Here's the Greek word picture here of pleasing God. It makes God excited. It thrills God's emotions. It it pictures God jumping up and down. God that delighted when he sees faith being exercised in your life and in my life. Not a little faith on Monday, then a little bit more on Thursday afternoon, and then it sparks up again Wednesday of the next week. No, no, no. Faith that is constant. Paul said this. He said it in Romans chapter number 4. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Can I repeat that? I want to get the exact verse for you. It is, it is Romans chapter 4, verse number 23. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. When I eat my meal today, I haven't eaten yet today, but when I do eat a sandwich in, in the room today, if I eat it thanking God for it, if I eat it, asking God to bless it. If I eat it, realizing every good and perfect, I am eating that sandwich in faith. It's not a sin to eat that sandwich. But if I eat that sandwich grumbling and saying I wanted turkey and I'm having to eat this ham and, 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 uh, and it is not tasting all that good and I grumble, grumble, that's a sin. I'm not eating that sandwich in faith. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Sounds like God wants us to live 24-7 constantly lives of faith and trust and belief in Him. For without faith it is impossible to please Him. Now, the verse continues. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. The noun in Greek, the noun faith is pistis. P-I-S-T-I-S. The verb believe is pistuo. P-I-S-P-I-S-T-E-U-O. P-I-S-T-E-U-O. And preacher, what nor... Faith is the noun. Belief is faith in action, relying on, trusting in, accepting at his word. He that cometh to God. Listen, that is the verb proserkomai. 
pros ekuma, he that cometh to God. That is another one of Paul's favorite verbs here in Hebrews. Pros ekuma. Er pros means two or toward. See, these fingers are pointing to or toward each other. Erkamai means to come. Come in the door. Come in the house. Come into the car. It's cold outside. To come. He that cometh to God. Am I getting it right? He that cometh to God. Pros Erkamai. Did you know? It's, it's the worship verb of the book of Hebrews. Let me say that again. It is the worship verb of the book of Hebrews. He that cometh to God. No individual in the Old Testament, Paul's writing this to Hebrews, to a group of uh, believing Jews, nobody could come to God. They could come to the front gate of the tabernacle, but there's brass altar, the brass laver, then a curtain, then a table of bread, then a candlestick, then a golden altar of incense, and then another huge curtain. You go past that, you're dead, and then you come into the presence. No Old Testament believer could come directly into the presence of God. But hallelujah, because of Calvary, because of the blood of Jesus, I need an amen. Because those veils have been rent in twain. They have been ripped apart by the marvelous power and grace of an almighty. I can come straight to come boldly before the throne of grace. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must. It is essential it is necessary. He that cometh to God must believe. Must believe. Paul loves that. Man, we're in one of Paul's. Uh, 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 these vocabulary words occur again and again in Hebrews. Carries the idea of necessity. An absolute requirement. He must believe. He must believe. Believe what, preacher? That God is. That God is. I guess if you believe that God is not, you're an atheist. That ah, theos, no God. But you can't please God with that kind of an attitude. You're going to have to believe that God is. Class, let me ask you a question. Do you believe in the existence of God? All right, let me ask you another question. Have you ever seen him? I'll answer. No. Can you describe him in any great detail? No. All I've got is the spiritual description outlined in the Word. Then Jesus came and God came in a human body, but even then all I've got is a description. Of it is not empirically verifiable that God is. I've never seen him. But by faith, Someone said, oh, get this, write it down. It's a word picture. Someone said, faith is the eye of the soul. Faith is the eye of the soul. Oh, I see God through faith. I believe that He is. I'm trust. The Bible says in the beginning, God. Did you know the Bible never tries to prove the existence of God? Never. Not once that I can recall. In fact, here's the, how the Bible begins. In the beginning, God doesn't try to prove he's there. It just says he is there in the beginning and he created the heaven and the earth. We're going to have to believe, trust, rely upon the fact, this book, that God is. Isn't that an unusual way of putting it? That God is. It reminds me of a, a passage in the book of Exodus. Uh, Moses has been called from the wilderness to go to Pharaoh. He'll be the one to lead the children of, of Israel into, into liberty, out of bondage, and toward the land of Canaan. Moses got worried. Well, God, who, who shall I say sent me? God, when I come to the children of Israel and I say unto them, the God of your fathers, and they'll say, what's his name? What's the name of this God? What will I say to them? And God said unto Moses, if you want the reference, Exodus 3, 
13 and 14, God said unto Moses, here's my name, I am. I am. You must believe that God is. I am. In fact, God, uh, he doubled the, 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 the name. I am that I am. And God said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. H-A-Y-A-H. Haya is the Hebrew verb. He's the God who is. He's the God whose name is I am. Oh, can I say something? I'm glad my God's name is not I was. I'm glad my God's name is I hope to be, I want to be. I'm glad his name is I am. He could stroll through the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day and say I am. He could be in the burning fiery furnace with three Hebrew children uh, hundreds of years later and say I am. He could be born in Bethlehem of Judea, laid in a little manger and say, I am. <laughs> he is moving around in my heart right now as I'm preaching by uh, this old cross out here by the graveyard, by the cemetery, and say, I am. And 10 billion years from now, as eternity unfolds, as we're in glory in his presence, he is still going to be, I am that I am. He is the eternally existent I am. Hallelujah. You got to believe that God is. Can I go on record? I believe that God is. I believe that God is the living God. I believe that God is the God who has washed my sins away. And you got to believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Let me talk about that a minute. That diligently seek him. Ek, it's a prefix on this verb, and zeteo. It means to search for him, to long for him, to hunger for him. It's this idea, idea this attitude. God, I've got to have you. <laughs> I can't live without you. Why, why, you're the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Uh, you and your word are more than my necessary food. You're, uh, I've got meat to eat nobody knows of, and not, that meat is knowing you and loving you. They, they must believe he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I found a verse in the book of Jeremiah. I'd like to read it to you. Found it a little while ago as I was studying uh, for the meditation. God's talking. Listen to him. And ye shall seek me, Israel, and ye shall find me. Listen. When you search for me with all your heart. When you search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you. Anybody searching for God? Oh my, preacher, I don't know about that searching for God. I found him the day I got saved, hallelujah. Searching for him more intimately. Searching for him more personally. Paul, that dear man of God had been saved 30 years at least. And he wrote this to the Philippians. After 30 years of walking with God, that I may know him that I may know him. I've, I, I've loved him for 30 years and yet I don't feel like I know all I want to know. I don't feel like I've plumbed the depths of the reality of the Lord Je that I may know him. Is anybody that hungry today? Anybody that eager today? I believe among our class there are individuals who are absolutely that hungry today. I think that's why in the Beatitudes Jesus said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled hungering and thirsting for God. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Oh, I want to please him. I want him to be excited about Michael Bagel trying to live for him and serve him and preach his word down here. For he that cometh to God, what an honor. Come boldly before the throne of grace 
What an honor. I can come to the Lord Jesus because of the blood, uh, uh, to Almighty God because of the blood of Jesus and Jesus my, uh, my intercessor. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. I believe that he is. Can I go a little further? Maybe I'm fudging here. I know that he is. I know that he is. He's living in my, he's born witness in my, I know that I know that I must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. It almost sounds like the more you seek him, the more he'll bless you. The more you seek him, the more he'll reward you. I don't think we uh, talked about that word rewarder. If I'm not mistaken, it is the only time this specific word, this specific term is used as a noun, the rewarder, in the whole New Testament. Rewarder. Preacher, what in the world is it? God's a rewarder. It says so right here. Mistos. Mistos. Uh, rewarder is a blended word. It uses mistos, apo, and didomi. Mistos, apo, and didomi. Let me define the terms. Mistos means wages. I can't change that, I don't guess. I don't want to. Salary. Remuneration. Payback. And then reward. He is a rewarder. Apo didomi, apo just makes the verb stronger. It means from. Didomi is the verb to give. It is being given from God, apo didomi, to me, miss us. He will reward me because I live a life that doesn't have a lot of faith gaps in it. I live in a way to please him and to glorify him because I believe that he is. And then I believe he is a rewarder. I believe it. Oh, he's rewarded me. He's blessed me beyond measure. I need some amens. He's been better to all of us than we deserve. Oh, how he rewards us. His mercies are new every morning. Every good and perfect gift comes down from him from above. He is a rewarder. And that doesn't count the rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. He is a rewarder of those of us that diligently seek him. I mean, that's, that's God's self-portrayal. He wants to be known as the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Makes me hungry for God. May I read the verse again? Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. I hope I'm talking to a class full of, full of students, young men and uh, uh, ladies, individuals who want to please Him, want to make Him excited, want to put a smile on His face. It's impossible to please him without faith. For he that cometh to God, I've already come to God a time or two today. I want to come to him again after I feel like I'm in his face right now talking about him and adoring him. And I want to, I want to talk to him a little more after I finish this and before, certainly before I preach tonight. Sometimes I get to communion with God while I'm in that pulpit preaching right over there. He that cometh to God must believe. You don't have a choice. It is essential. It, it is a necessity. You must believe. Lean on. Trust Him that He is. I am that I am. He is. I am Alpha and Omega. He is. I'm the Rose of Sharon, the bright and morning star. He is. I believe that He is and that He is a rewarder. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You know what I'm thinking? I believe there is a correlation between this sixth verse and Hebrews 11.1. 1. Listen to this. Faith is, there's that verb. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You must believe that God is and God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Let me give you the essence of Hebrews 11.1. 1. It's getting breezy. I hope it's not going to uh, distort the sound. Uh, Hebrews 11.1. 1. If you've got faith in Him, if you're trusting in Him, He will reward you. He will reward you 
Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. A faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not say He will reward you with proof. He will reward you with blessings. He will reward you with he handfuls on purpose because you've trusted in Him. Believe in Him. He'll give you the proof, the evidence, the assurance, the blessings that you are His. And that's exactly what Hebrews 11, 6 is. If you'll believe that He is, He'll be the rewarder to you for diligently seeking Him. It almost sounds like this. As the faith goes up, the blessings come down. Remember what that word faith is the substance? It meant things that settle. As my faith rises to Him, there comes settling in my heart assurance, conviction. Without a shadow of a doubt, I belong to Him. Blessings after blessings after blessings. Countless blessings. Same thing here in verse 6. Believe that He is. And if you believe that He is, if you seek Him, if you're running after Him, if you're eager to know Him better and better, He'll reward you. There won't be any doubt in your mind you belong to Him. He'll give you assurance. He'll give you proof. He'll give you conviction. I'll tell you what He'll do. And I'm using Malachi's word picture, but it applies here. He'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out so many blessings you can't handle them. You can't bear them. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Heavenly Father, give me that kind of faith. And Lord, I don't want to leave my class out. That gentleman, that lady, mama or daddy, grandpa, grandma, that young person, that preacher, that Sunday school teacher, that new one in Christ hasn't been believing but a very short time. Lord, Lord, we want the kind of faith that pleases you. Help us to help us to learn to live through the Word of God. Help us to learn to live to make you excited, to put a smile on your face, to make you a thrilled Heavenly Father in the lives we're trying to live. God, don't let us have gaps in our faith. Teach me that whatever is not of faith is sin, and I ought to live my life no gaps, day after day, hour after hour, minute after minute in faith and reliance and love and letting all that give us the kind of faith that excites our Heavenly Father. God, deepen our conviction. We've got it. There's no doubt that God is. Deepen our conviction that God is. And we're going to see Him one of these days. Faith will be realized in sight. And then God, remind us of those blessings. How you're the rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Grant that for us as a class in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Sun's not shining. It's threatening rain. And as I said earlier, it's cool. Notice I had to put my coat on. I didn't want to, but I had to. By, by an emblem of the old rugged cross, studying one of the greatest verses in all of the Bible. For without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that God is, and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. If you've got faith in him, he will give you the proof. He will give you the blessings to confirm that faith. Hallelujah. What a God.